Bzz, bzz. Oh, you startled me. I'm so busy that I nearly forgot where I was. I'm a honeybee, and I'm delighted to be here to tell you a little bit about my everyday world. Honeybees are quite social. Humans are social, too, which means that they live together in communities or groups instead of living alone. Social insects live in communities, too. Most insects are solitary, living alone their entire lives. They are alone when they hatch from their eggs, they search for food alone, and they find their own shelter. There are thousands of different kinds of bees on the planet, and most of them live solitary lives. But honeybees are different. We live together in organized communities and depend upon one another to live, solving problems as a team. We gather and share food, build nests together, cooperate or work together to raise our young, and help protect one another from enemies. Honeybee communities are called colonies. Our colonies are made up of 20,000 or more bees. We like to make our nests or beehives in dark places. That's why you often see pictures of us buzzing about in the trunks of hollow trees. People use beehive boxes to raise honeybees for honey. Perhaps you've seen these boxes in a field, orchard, or backyard. Wherever we nest, we build honeycombs. This amazing structure of layered cells is made from a waxy substance that we produce in our abdomens. Can you spot a pattern among the cells in this honeycomb? They are all six-sided. What purpose do all of these cells serve? These cells are very important to our lives. Listen carefully and I'll tell you how they are important to the many jobs we perform. Remember, I told you we are very social insects and very busy. There is lots of work to be done and each bee in the colony has its own job to do. Every honeybee colony has a mother called the queen bee. The queen is always the largest bee in the hive, and she has only one job to do. She must lay eggs, lots and lots of eggs. She must produce more queens for other hives and make sure there are enough worker bees to do the work in her own hive. The queen bee flies from the nest to mate with male bees called drones. Once a drone has mated with the queen bee, it has done its job and it dies. Drones cannot sting because they don't have stingers. When the queen returns, she lays her eggs, sometimes more than 1,000 eggs a day. Where do you think the queen bee lays all these eggs? Right, she returns to the comb to lay them there in the cells. The queen then pushes tiny eggs no bigger than a pinhead from her abdomen into the waxy cells of the honeycomb, one egg to each cell. In just a few days, the eggs hatch. The larvae get fed pollen by one of the hive's female worker bees. Pollen is a powder produced by flowers that helps them reproduce. The larvae grow and eventually spin silky cocoons. Worker bees quickly seal over the small waxy cells of the honeycomb, protecting the developing pupa inside each cocoon. Does this process sound familiar? It should. The bees are undergoing a change. In the previous read aloud, you heard a word that means the changes an insect goes through during its life cycle. What is the word that refers to that change? It's a metamorphosis. When they emerge from their cocoons, they will chew their way out of the cells, emerging as full-grown adults. Most of the new adults are female worker bees. They only live for a few months, and they spend their whole lives working hard to keep the hive running well. They keep the hive clean. They serve as nurse bees, tending to the larvae. They make new cells and repair old ones and they store nectar and pollen that others bring back to the hive. After several weeks working inside the hive, these hard-working females go outside to serve as guards, protecting the hive from enemies and bees from other hives. Each hive has its own special chemical scent, or smell, 
so it is easy to tell who doesn't belong in the hive. Near the end of her life, a worker bee becomes a forager bee, collecting a sweet juice from flowers. A forager is an animal that wanders over an area in search of food. This juice, or nectar, is used to make honey. Foraging worker bees have keen or sharp senses of smell and sight and very good memories. They may visit thousands of flowers each day to find the best nectar. When a bee discovers a particularly good source of nectar, it returns to the hive to share its information with other foragers. First, it lets the other foragers smell the pollen so they can identify the type of flower. Then it performs a complicated and special waggle dance. As it circles about in a pattern like a figure eight, it wags its abdomen as it moves through the middle of its dance. The bee's repeated movements, circling and waggling its abdomen, tell the others exactly how far away and in which direction from the sun the flowers are located. A bee that thinks she has found a really good flower patch does the waggle dance with lots of energy. Where do you suppose the bees put the nectar when they return to the hive? They make the nectar into honey and store it in honey cells, the cells that are not being used for developing bees. The honey is an important food source for the bees. When moving from flower to flower, Worker bees rub up against a yellow powder called pollen. Honey bees will pack the pollen into baskets of hairs on their hind legs, and then they carry it with them. Pollen is used to feed the larvae, but this pollen is important stuff for another reason. Plants need pollen from other plants in order to make new seeds. This is called pollination. Honey bees are important because they carry the pollen between flowers of the same species or kind. I'd like to introduce you to a relative of mine. This is a paper wasp. Look closely at its body next to mine. What do we have in common? We each have a head. We each have a thorax with six legs, an abdomen, an exoskeleton, and wings. And this particular wasp, the paper wasp, is a social insect just like me. Some wasps are solitary, but the black and gold ones nearly always live in societies or groups. Like honeybees, wasps live in large groups. What are these groups called? Yes, wasps live in colonies. Each colony has a leader, a female wasp who is bigger than all the other wasps, and who spends most of her time laying eggs. Sound familiar? What is she called? Yes, the queen. Like honeybees, wasps build nests. They build them in many different places, usually in hidden, difficult to see places that are protected from rain and bad weather, such as under the eaves of houses or in protected areas on trees. The eave of a house is a protected place where the roof and the outside wall come together, so wasps like to build their nests there. Wasp nests have a very different look from beehives on the outside, but their paper-like structures are similar to ours on the inside. We'll take a look at how paper wasps build their nests. The process begins with the queen. She finds plant fibers, dry grasses, old boards, fence posts, and pulls them apart with her strong jaws. She softens the splintery pieces with saliva inside her mouth and chews them into a paste that looks and feels a little like paper. Then she sticks a dab of this paste to whatever surface she has chosen for her nest. The queen adds a tough stem to support the whole nest and begins attaching cone-like chambers to it. These clusters of six-sided chambers open downward to keep the rain out. As the queen forms each chamber, she deposits an egg in each one. The eggs develop into larvae. The queen wasp takes care of the first larvae herself. She leaves the nest to find food, capturing and chewing other insects into mush to feed her young. 
About two weeks after hatching, the larvae enter the pupa stage, spinning cocoons inside each cell and covering the cells with silk. These sealed cells break open a few weeks later, and out come adult wasps with long legs, strong wings, and large eyes. Most of these newly hatched wasps are female workers who begin to take over the queen's work right away. They hunt for food and feed the larvae, clean and repair the cells, and guard the nest. Others fan the nest with beating wings, and some even spread water over the combs to keep the nests cool. When the workers enlarge the nest for more and more wasps, the queen goes back to laying eggs. By summer's end, many of the workers have died. There are often 250 or more cells inside the wasp's papery nest. The wasps that do emerge at the end of summer are no longer female worker wasps. Instead, they are new queens and males. The new queens find shelter in protected places, in attic walls, inside logs, and under bushes, where they hibernate all winter. When spring comes, the new queens come out from hiding and begin building nests for new colonies of wasps. All wasps abandon their nests in fall, using them for one season only. When fall comes and the leaves drop from the trees, look up and see if you can spot one of the papery apartment houses dangling from under a roof or partially hidden behind a wall. Next time, you'll find out how some other social insects build their nests. Until then, be thinking about who they might be.